Welcome to Camera and Secura. I'm Jamie Maldonado, and we're going to have a bit of a quick pre-travel uh, what's in my bag. Plus, I'm making a zine. I've actually been in publishing for almost 20 years now, so this is kind of a no-brainer for me. I've got a little body of work that I've saved specifically for zine making, and it's been a really cool experiment. And I'll be able to show you the zine more uh, before too long, so we'll go into it deeper then. So the pre-order is on my website. It's linked below, jamiemphoto.com. And it's going to be about 32 pages with the cover. I've picked a printer. They're local. I'm really excited about it. I was looking at online printers, especially Blurb. And just so you know, I've actually done a test print with Blurb right here. And I was pretty close to picking them, but I made a call to a local company that I'm familiar with but haven't worked with before. And I'm really glad I did because I think it's going to be really good. And... Uh, this is not the actual title here anyway. So, but yeah, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be letter size. Um, it's gonna include a few photos that you may have seen, a few that you haven't. This is not the final order. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this is, you know, I've, I've printed color bars and stuff on this with familiar photos. So you could see the print quality. And uh, yeah, um, I'm excited. A couple of photos that you have seen in some capacity. I've got a friend writing uh, an essay for me. It's going to be... She likes writing like art criticism and stuff like that. So I thought it would be a really interesting approach uh, to, to writing in the magazine to, to not be the writer, even though I am a writer. So I'm really interested to see what she says. I wanted her to write freely and we talked a little bit and she's uh, she's viewing writing. She sees the photos I've given her actually not just what's in the zine, but everything I'm considering for the zine, which is closing in on 50 photos now. And there will be about 30 in the magazine in the zine. I'm pretty excited, of course. Uh, I think it'll be great. So order now to get it for $12 signed by me. March 17th is the last day to pre-order and I'm going to have I'm going to go up to $15 after that. And in other news, I am going to Indiana tomorrow. So yeah, we're going to do a little what's in my bag travel edition. So I got a new bag. It's a Tinba DNA 15 messenger style bag, uh graphite. It's a uh, let's see if I can get this visible right here. Yeah. Uh, you've seen a few YouTube videos about this, I'm sure. Uh, I got it instead of the Peak Design bag because actually the main thing, not necessarily, not necessarily the financial aspect of it, but what really sold me, because this is you know a little bit cheaper than the 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 Peak Everyday uh, Messenger bag. The thing that sold me was that I heard that the Peak design bag uh, falls over when you put it flat on the bottom and tomorrow is going to be a prime example of why I don't want to do that. This bag sits uh, on its bottom. It's nice uh, and flat and even when you have stuff in it or don't have stuff in it, it sits flat on that bottom. It holds its form and I need that. Uh, I put it on airport floor and I'm a bit of a germaphobe so that's tough enough as it is. If it falls over and stuff it just really gets to me. So also I have the bag open a lot when it falls over and things spill out and you lose things if you're traveling. Anyway, uh, also has this super handy top access hole uh, which I actually use quite a bit and I'm really uh, impressed by these little uh, okay I'm not impressed by these little magnetic latches because they tend to fall off more often than I thought they would but they do reattach easily and they're not a problem but they they do come undone more easily than I thought but it's not very uh, it's not a very big deal but this uh, this quote-unquote uh, quiet velcro which I was totally skeptical was not gonna be quiet at all because yeah, but you really do, you pull it straight down. I mean, my microphone is right here, so that wasn't bad at all, and I could have done it a lot more silently than that. But the top access thing, uh, I really like. Uh, so on my travel, I've got these new uh, Daltronic headphones I'm trying out. I don't like headphones. I don't, um, we'll see. I, I don't really like them in general, but uh, I was editing, uh, video the other day and my puppies didn't like uh, the uh, voices coming out of my new speaker setup so I thought it'd be good and I'm traveling and I'll watch let me watch TV and 
and edit things on my phone or, or whatever and watch YouTube. I also carry these two microfiber claws, uh, but these are good for protection and for cleaning. And in here, of course, there's my uh, Fuji X-T2, which is recording right here. The Fuji X-T2 usually lives in um, the right side, my right side of the bag currently. I'm experimenting here. The Fuji GFX 50S with my third 63 millimeter um, 2.8 lens on it. Uh, we'll see how this one fares. I'm a little, a little worried about this. I'm just gonna use it. I'm not gonna live in fear. If it screws up again, then uh, I'll have to have a reckoning with the Fuji GF system, unfortunately. But this one's brand new. The other ones were older open box and used items. And I think that's what their problems were. If not, then I'll find out the hard way and it, it is what it is. Uh, to, the fact that I'm willing to put up with two of these things failing and giving my third one a try is because this lens is phenomenal and beautiful and very sharp and it's compact. Uh, we'll move on to um, my lenses. I've got this uh, Kaipen, uh, currently Kaipen uh, GFX autofocus adapter, which you've ha you've seen some videos of, uh, and I'd be glad to do an update on this, uh, since apparently that's drawing some interest, and it's got the Canon uh, 40 millimeter uh, 2.8 STM lens on it, and uh, it's a good combination. It's not, you know, if I could get the GF, uh, was it 40? three or 45 mil 45 millimeter lens on it. I would probably prefer that judging by the sharpness of this thing. But uh, honestly, uh, this does a great job. And it's the setup as it is, is like 250 plus, that's like 300 something dollars. And this also allows me to use other Canon lenses like this uh, sinfully slow focusing, but very beautiful um, 100 macro, macro 2.8 L. Canon, which also works on my Canon I use at the day job. Um, this is the the, the um, IS rattles a lot, which is uh, weird. But um, like I said, it, it the autofocus is horrifically slow, but the quality is very nice, and it gives me uh, portrait like lengths and stuff that um, honestly. And there's some nice uh, light weather sealing on this actually, which is cool even though there's not weather sealing on this. I, this allows me to get really close, really nice headshot type pictures, which I like. And uh, that's one reason I didn't go for the for the Fuji zoom, because uh, I looked at it and I was like, oh, that focal range, you know, covers this and that, and I could get that. And But what pulled me away from that is that the 63 millimeters on that lens versus this lens, um, this lens can focus, the, the GF63 can focus dramatically, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus here. This can focus dramatically closer, allowing you to get a better close-up shot, which I like a lot. Um, I like that. So that that's my main compartment. Um, I have a little piece of plastic currently protecting this Canon lens because I lost the lens cap in my office, I think. Um, and it does have that little thing that comes out. That's real handy, the little insert, bag insert, which I currently have configured like this. And I like to carry along parts of my old camera bag with me, which is why I have that little green thing in here for extra padding. It came from my previous camera bag. Anyway, on this trip, I also have a Tiffin uh, polarizer filter, which uh, might put to use, I don't know, um, ND, probably mostly for video, uh, Fuji body cap if I have some bright video I need to do. And the polarizer I'm using in part because I'm gonna have to shoot some in suboptimal conditions possibly in, in Indianapolis and or in Indiana in general. Uh, the front pockets in this thing are real handy. And uh, that's one thing you'll tell you about this, uh, this messenger bag style camera bag, that it's got a lot of pockets and it really does. So in one of the side pockets I have all my batteries, I've got my uh, white balance checker which I need to use a lot more. These uh, front pockets are pretty empty right now. My side pocket, germaphobe I am, have my hand sanitizer. Under three ounces uh, for flying, by the way. Rain protector on uh, on that. Oh, 
have to leave this at home um, bug spray but otherwise this is good stuff to have I, I shoot with a model a frequent model who is highly allergic to mosquitoes and stuff like that helps this is a little strap for to go around uh, to, care, to secure the bag more toward to your body uh, flashlight um, like I said the rain bag for the camera bag which I could probably leave to reduce bulk but you know um, and yeah, that's that's about it uh, for my camera bag. Uh, I'll probably have like a like a book. What is this? It's my that's what's in my camera bag for this trip. And I've got some lighting gear. I'm gonna try to shoot it as I go. Uh, I need to get back to packing, uh, and I will document my journey. You can keep up with me on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, and the links will be below. Uh, I'm super excited. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, click the bell notifications, uh, check out my other videos. I have a playlist. I am really closing in on 400 subscribers and I'd really appreciate if you help me push that past that little goal and keep, uh, keep us moving forward. And I will see you soon.